Hey guys, my name is Courtney. I resell clothing and accessories on the Poshmark app and I wanted to come on here and share my analysis of the ThreadUp Rescue Box 100 handbags for $500. So this is my third ThreadUp Rescue Box. My first one was actually a handbag box, uh, just 10 handbags for I believe it was $100. Uh, $100. And then I also did a 50 mixed tops, which I did put up a video a few days ago for that one. So I just wanted to quickly run through the uh, process that I had to go through to get all of the items. I placed the order on October 6th. Uh, two days later, I received the tracking numbers. I think there were three of them, if I'm not mistaken. I received 47 bags on the 16th of October. I watched a video, I believe it, it was the bin pickers who also did the 100 handbag box and it appeared that they had some issues not receiving everything. So I emailed ThreadUp on the 18th, which was two days later, saying I, I didn't have any more tracking numbers, I only have 47 bags, and uh, they sent me new tracking numbers basically the next week on the 22nd. I received two more boxes on the 26th but I was missing one. I did have a tracking number for a third box that didn't arrive. I have a UPS store box and I noticed that on the label of the two boxes that I had received that day, they had missed the suite number and the box number. And so that third box may have been delivered to another business in the shopping center. So I emailed them again, but that same day to explain that I was concerned that that third box was delivered to a, a different business and that I was missing 19 handbags. So uh, I also mentioned to them that out of the bags that I had opened at that point, I had already received two fake items. So uh, I did receive that third box on the 29th. I think the business that received it took it to the correct location. It was open. It didn't look like anything was missing. I did count the handbags. I received them all, uh, but I did receive one more fake out of that last 19. So I did email them back again to say, I received the third box. Uh, what should I do with these fakes? And uh, I think they they are they sent me a shipping label so I can send back the, the three fake purses. And uh, I know there's someone on Instagram who told me that she had sent five fake bags back from her 100, 100 handbag box and they had sent her 25 to replace those five. So I was kind of hoping, but the email response that I received only said I was going to receive one replacement per fake. So we'll see what I get. I'll probably put that on Instagram when I receive those. But I did want to come on here because I do have the complete order. So I have basically uh, everything in order right here and I'm just going to run through uh, basically a, a rating of 1 to 10 say the condition in my opinion and then the approximate or estimated sale price that I, I should be able to get. So the first one is a Kate Spade tote in my first handbag box, the 10 handbag box, I received a black tote similar to this, but it was a nylon. This is actually a leather. This is bigger, more heavy duty. I would only put this as a six out of 10 on condition. And the only reason why is there are just a tiny couple spots inside, but there's some damage on the strap. You can see uh, on this side, just one side. So I think it's a great bag and everything else checks out as far as good condition but I don't think I can repair that. So I'm hoping that maybe I will be able to get about $70 for this. I think this style tends to do a bit better because it's kind of a more heavy duty tote. So that's the first one. The second one is this Bagu. I think it's a, a navy striped duck bag. So it's got long strap, short straps, and this was in pretty decent condition. I actually ran it through the washer because there was a spot on one of the, right here, I don't know if you can see that. So it did, I put some stain remover, I washed it. I was trying to kind of get that out from the inside, but it is a cute bag. I think maybe I'll still be able to get $10 based off of comps. 
And the third bag is this Cole Haan leather bag. It's a really nice, soft, I think this is a vintage style, uh, but it's got a lot of great markings for Cole Haan and nice tassel detail, zippers. It's in good condition. I don't see much wear to this. There is light wear, but nothing that I would um, be concerned about or, or think someone would need to repair. So I would put this as an eight out of 10 and I'm hoping to get uh, about $40 for this. I did already uh, clean up some of these that I've had for a couple weeks. So some of them were a little bit more dingy when I received them, but some leather cleaner did help. So this next bag is a little duffel that says Jim and Juice. It's cute, it's in good condition. I put this as a nine out of 10. Uh, there wasn't any really major signs of wear other than it didn't feel brand new. Um, I don't think these go for a lot. They do sell on Poshmark, but I, someone I believe said this may have come out of a, a fab fit fun, I believe is what they said. So I don't think it's a high value, but I think it should be able to sell. This next bag is the uh, a long chomp. It's a red, I actually have it. It's a medium sized red long chomp. I was really excited to see this. This is kind of just such a classic bag. It seemed to be in really good condition when I first opened it. It has all of the markings in all the right places. But then I noticed that on just this one side, there's some wear on this leather and I don't think there's really anything I can do about it. Um, so a little bummed about that. I'm still hoping to get about 35 maybe for this. And this next one is a Lily Pulitzer. So this one, uh, I've tried to clean up a little bit, run it through the washer. It was really dingy and it's a cute style. I would say this is kind of a little beach bag. I don't know as far as Lily Pulitzer vintage versus not, but this was pretty dingy when I got it. A quick wash through the washing machine and I think it's in actually pretty decent condition. So when in received, I would have put it more as like a four or a five out of 10, but I would say right now it's more like a seven. Uh, there's no major staining or signs of wear, just kind of has a classic Lily Pulitzer. So I'm hoping to get about 15 maybe 20 for that. And then this bag, I hadn't, I wasn't familiar with this brand. It's a beautiful bag. Mind you, this has already gotten quite a bit of love as far as leather cleaner. So this is a brand called Tano and I'll show you the label, but it's, it was, it, I don't think it had ever, I think it had been well loved and never had a leather conditioner put on it. So I was a little worried. This exact bag I think sold new for 65 on Poshmark. I don't know if there were any others, but quite a bit of leather conditioner, but it's a beautiful bag, a nice leather, and I think hopefully I should be able to get $30, $35 for this. And this next one is a little clutch. It looks like maybe it's been worn a couple times or used a couple times but no major signs or no really any signs. It's the Big Buddha brand and it's just kind of a faux snake skin kind of clutch. It's cute, it's neutral. I'm hoping to get about 13 for that. This is a Bagalini, I think it's how you say it. I've actually sold one of these uh, and, and it has a following. It's a travel bag, kind of a sturdy bag. This one I really liked. It did have a few marks, but this nylon material is pretty easy to clean. So I was able to wipe that up and it looks to be in great condition. I stuffed it when I was taking photos. So this actually is kind of cool because you can wear it more as a shoulder style bag or you can just cinch the straps and it's more of a backpack style, which I thought was really cute. Perfect for traveling to have that convenience of 
the dual function. So with this, I'm hoping to get uh, about $30. There is a little bit of nail polish in this front pocket. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get th that out. I'm thinking it's nail polish. But, so I would put this as a seven out of 10. And then this bag is the B. Mikowski. It's a really pretty mustard yellow. I would say this is more five or six out of 10 because when I did do some analysis, which you probably won't pick up here, but there's quite a bit of water stain all throughout here. There's some water stains on here and then there's kind of a spot right here. So it's a cute bag. I think I probably would get more if it didn't have that damage, but I'm hoping to get about 15 for this. So this next bag, it's probably one of my favorites. I'm not a big Dooney and Burke person or just logos in general, but I love black and I just thought this was such a great style and it seemed to be in good condition, but when I inspected closely, there are signs of wear on each of the four corners and it's kind of a cloth material. So I don't know if you can see that, but really no way to repair it. If this doesn't sell, I'd be happy to keep it for myself. It's a cute, cute bag. And uh, other than those minor signs of wear, I, I'm hoping that it should get about 30 if it sa sells. Uh, and I would put this at about six out of 10 on the condition. So this bag, it, I, I was excited to see it just because it's so cute for fall. It's a little backpack and just the print is super cute, nice little size. It's the Adam, I, I don't know how to say it, but Adam Lips maybe, Lipes, uh for Target. So it seems to be in good condition. I do need to probably put a lint roller to it, but it's cute. I know some of these have sold. I think there's no major signs of wear. However, the back, there's kind of some fuzz. So maybe the sweater shaver should be able to help with that. But I think I should be able to get about 15 for this. This next one was a brand that I was unfamiliar with. And to be honest, when I opened it, I guess it just has a costume feel to it. And I didn't think it was really anything. But apparently this brand, which is Glenda Guys, maybe? G-I-E-S, which you can see right there. Uh, it does well. It's a uh, kind of vintage inspired bags. It's got this really nice, I don't think it's going to pick up the kind of texture of the bag, but it's really soft. It does have some signs of wear, but so I would put this at a seven out of 10. The straps have a little bit of sign of wear, but other than that, it's in good condition. I actually am hoping to get about 50. So some of this exact style has sold for more. And so i gonna go for it. <laughs> so this next bag was another brand that I was unfamiliar with. So when I looked it up, I realized it's a diaper bag and it's not, it's not a cheap diaper bag. I don't think it's stork sack. And it's this really pretty pink color with the tan accents. It's got a lot of functionality. Everything kind of checks out with this, but I do need to do some cleanup. It's got some signs of just wear, probably rubbing up against clothes. So I'm gonna try and work on that, but I think hopefully I should be able to get about 35 for this. So if I can get those spots out, that's what I'm aiming for. So I would put this at a seven out of 10. I really liked this next bag. It is a Top Shop bag and it's a little bit of an odd shape. I'm not sure if it's gonna pick it up, but it's got the long strap, it's got the shoulder straps, and I just really liked the style. When you open it up, it just, it's got so much space. If I was still living in San Francisco, this I would have definitely kept just because it's kind of a throw-all bag. It's a vegan leather, and there's really no major signs. It doesn't look like it's in perfect condition, but no signs of wear. So I would put this at about eight out of 10, and I was excited to see that. So this next one is a Michael Kors little, uh, kind of a straw material clutch. It's got the gold accents, so Michael Kors on both sides. I would put this at a seven out of 10. There's a faint stain on the front and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get it out. I certainly will try, but uh, it's cute. It's got 
all the things, you know, just simple and basic, but Michael Kors. So if someone's a huge fan of this brand and wants something a little different than a regular shoulder bag, I think they'll like this. So I'm hoping to get about 25 for this. This one is another brand I was unfamiliar with. It looks like it's a little bit of a travel style bag, but it's Manhattan and I think it's Portage Bay maybe. Uh, so this, they have different styles of this. And when I looked up comps, there were some other bags that were a different style that kind of went for a little bit more. This, I'm not sure if people, it's a little short to kind of wear as a shoulder bag and to hold it, there's no, there's no missing strap, but it, I should hopefully be able to get about 15. I did try and clean a couple spots, maybe just for, you know, outside water. I really like this bag. This is a Mark by Mark Jacobs, and it's a crossbody bag. So it's got these cute little details on the front. It's very clean inside and out. It's a great leather. It's got the fun print in the inside. It's not very big, but it's a kind of just a perfect crossbody. Another one that if I was living in San Francisco still, I'd probably keep this but just a very good quality bag. And I'm hoping to get about 50 for this. It does have a light wear just in the, the corner. So I don't think I've put any leather cleaner to this. I certainly will do my best to get that out, but I'm hoping to get about 50. I'd say this was about an eight out of 10. This one was a fun one. I love, I love fringe and, uh, so this is a Steve Madden. It's got both straps and just a lot of fun. It does have light marks on the fringe on one place, I believe. And I'm not sure because I don't think this is real leather. Actually, it is real leather. I'm not sure if my leather cleaner will be able to get this out, but uh, I really liked just the neutral aspect, the fact that those straps are there. I'm hoping to get somewhere between 15 to 20. This isn't a a high-end brand, but certainly I think they're huge fans of Steve Madden, and this is just a really cute style. So maybe more if I can get those spots out, but I will disclose all marks in my listings. This next one is a coach bag. So I think I actually got two coach bags, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and I was a little surprised because they have the coach rescue boxes as well, so I wasn't anticipating to get that. But this is kind of a vintage red. I did find a really great website that was able to talk about the serial numbers on the the uh, the serial numbers on the patch here. Um, I think they've changed more recently and they've gotten rid of the patches. But just based off of the numbers, you can kind of estimate when the year was and if it is in fact vintage. So this had light signs of wear. I did put some leather cleaner to it and it seems to be in pretty good condition. I'm hoping to get about 45 for this for maybe a coach vintage lover. I think red is always a great pop. So uh, this, I would say about seven out of 10 on the condition. This next one, I was unfamiliar with the brand, but you know, when you pick up a bag and you're just like, this is a great, Great bag, it just feels great. It's another crossbody, it's very thin. It has, when you open up this front flap, a lot of pockets, uh, so that it's just kind of a perfect, another perfect, in my opinion, travel bag or city bag, but not very spacious, so I wouldn't be able to use it for any clothing, but I'm not sure if the label's gonna pick up, but it says, feel the difference, and I believe you say Osgood Marley, and I looked it up. It seems to be a pretty good line of bags, but, and there's really no, I mean, I would put this as a nine out of 10. There's just no signs of, of wear. It's kind of basic and I don't know how many people are searching for this. I don't know how quickly it will sell, but I'm hoping to get about $40 for this. Got to shift my boxes since there's so many bags. And the other thing, I don't know if I mentioned this, I'm only showing the bags that I'm planning to resell. So I ordered 100, I received 100, did take a little bit, so a little effort. Uh, and there are 
55 bags that I'm planning to list to resell. The other 45, I am probably going to have some sort of warehouse sale and uh, try to get maybe an average of two to three dollars per bag. So I'll go through the expected total profit and those numbers at the end of this video. But in the variety of boxes, I did get quite a few Vera Bradley. So the, I'm just going to quickly go through these. They do sell, so I'm not sad about seeing Vera Bradley. And I didn't expect to get so many. I think I got seven or eight. So this I was excited about because it's got the paper and the tape. So it appeared to be new, but when I started taking photos of this, there's a really faint spot right over here and it won't be able to pick up here. It just picked up in my lighting set and I was a little bummed because I was hoping that by having it new, this is something called a all-in-one, I believe. So I did bring down the price, expected price to only about $15 for this, but it's not new with tags, but it's new without tags. Just a spot on it. So maybe it sat in a closet or somewhere. This is a little green mini bag. This was about an 8 out of 10. Fair Bradley tends to just have that worn feel. So even with the new with tags ones, kind of just have that soft, worn feel. So this seemed to be in good condition, 8 out of 10. I'm hoping for about 15. I have sold four bags out of this box. I'll review those at the end, but uh, I don't have everything listed. So this is a kind of pink print. It's got both straps and looks to be in good condition. About eight out of 10, I'd say, and I'm hoping to get about 18 for this. This is a little red, kind of thin backpack. I like the print, cute little bandana print, but it's clean on the inside and out, nine out of 10. It was came flat, so it didn't even feel like it had really been used. Hoping to get about 20 for this. I got two Vera Bradleys that were new with tags. This is called the Mini Hipster Night and Day. And the suggested retail was 50. So because it's so small, I do like the black and white. I like the fact that it's new with tags. Because it's so small, I'm expecting maybe 22, 25, probably closer to 20, 22. But um, it, I would say this is a 10 out of 10. It doesn't look like it's worn at all. And it is new with tags. This is the other new with tags. This is called the Holiday Tote Dogwood. And it's another black, white, yellow floral pattern. And that one, I would say, is 10 out of 10 as well. Doesn't look like it has any signs of wear. And I'm hoping to get about 30 for that. I did sell one very similar to that for about 25 already. And um, so hopefully the new with tags gets just a little bit more. This one's a big guy. This is a, I think it's a Weekender style bag. I don't know the Vera Bradley names, but this has the long strap. It's definitely been used, but it's still in good condition. So I'm hoping to get about 40 for this. I'd say this is an eight out of 10 as far as condition, no major signs of wear. So we'll see what we get with that. I'm running out of space over here. So I have this I, in my opinion, beautiful fossil bag. It's a great leather tote, it's a little bit thinner style. It's got the fossil on the outside. It's this beautiful cream color. We did already have to put some leather cleaner to it. I tried it and then I took it down to my dad, who lives about, my parents who live about an hour away, and asked, asked him to kind of work on it a little bit as well. He seemed to get most of the marks. They were just kind of scuffs on this cream color, but I'm hoping to get about 35, 40 for this. It's just a great bag. And I'd say the condition before cleaning it was about six out of 10 because of those scuff marks. This is a Tommy Hilfiger. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it to pop out. It's a little satchel bag, faux leather accents. Uh, I don't know, I think there's some Tommy pieces that people can sell for, resell for quite a bit. I don't think this is going to be one of them. It's cute. It's got the logo on the front. It's got the T and the H kind of throughout, but it's not leather and uh, it's kind of basic. So I'm hoping to get about 15. There was a minor spot on the inside, so I put this at about an 8 out of 10. I don't mind spots on the inside too much. 
but um, I do think it brings down the value just a little bit. Not as bad as spots on the outside. So I actually have two of the same brand and I wasn't familiar with it, but they both, one is kind of a coated canvas and one is just, or coated nylon maybe, and this one is just kind of more of a nylon. So it's a really cute crossbody. This one has a full leather strap. This one has more of a canvas strap. It's by Lily Bloom. They seem to be in good condition. I love the little, there's a little, um, I don't know what you call it, Lily Bloom leaf maybe, but they're both in good condition. I'm hoping to get about 25 for each of these. And then this one is the a Juni, another Junium Burke. And this, I, this is actually in just really great condition. Very little, if any, signs of wear. Uh, I have had this listed for a while. There are a few likes. I'm not sure because of the brown and the tan color, maybe the style. It hasn't sold yet. I'm hoping to get about $40 for this. And I've got this Cole Haan. It's this really pretty bronze color. And I love Cole Haan bags. I think there was one that was shown earlier. I love their shoes. I love their products. So this one I believe was in, you know, kind of seven out of 10 conditions, light signs of wear, a little bit of leather conditioner, cleaned it up a bit, but it's kind of small. So I'm only expecting to get about 35 for this. Really nice neutral color though. So there were, uh, out of the 45 bags that I'm not reselling, they are either bags that are no brands or they are bags that the condition brings down the, the potential resale value. And I just don't think it's, it's worth listing. So if the comps kind of were in $10 or less, I was just going to put those aside for a warehouse sale and not, not go through the time of listing except there were two no brands that I decided to give a shot. This one is new with tags. This is a no brand, but I just thought it was really cute. It's a little longer shoulder bag. It's got the tassels in the front, a cute design. I think this would be a perfect spring bag. No wear, no signs of wear whatsoever. There is no price on here. It looks like it's a Gemma Lane boutique. And so it just says A and S blue. So that's the only marking that I could find but I'm hoping to get maybe about 20 for this since it is new with tags. So we'll see. May as well take a risk on some of these. This is, I think it's Ogeo. It's a cute little crossbody. I think it's crossbody, yeah. And another kind of travel style bag. I really like the button detail over here. There's the logo. There were, and I don't know if it's gonna pick it up, but there, it almost, almost looked like maybe a bird attack to the person uh, and so there was like a, a white-ish mark, a grayish mark right there. I'm trying to clean it up but hoping to get about 20 on this. It certainly wasn't a stain but I'll keep working on it. It's It's gone a little bit away so we'll see. This next one was another Kate Spade and really love the pop of color. It's cute. However, it's missing, I believe, a long strap. There's the, I think a strap should have gone through there. Also, just having the handle alone is, is a little weird. This is not a leather bag. I think this might be a patent leather. But there were, I would say this condition was more 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10. There were some faint spots there. I still need to work on it a little bit but I have gotten most of them out. I'm hoping that the Kate Spade color lover will not mind that it's missing a strap, and I'm hoping to maybe still get about 45 or 50. This actually was in the bag, and it talks about the bag, which was helpful, so it just how to clean it. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping, it actually has a cute little thing. She tucked her coral lipstick away and floated back to the party. So that was in a pocket, and certainly does not mean it was new, because it was used, but it's a cute little bag. This next one is a cute clutch. It is by White House Black Market. It's got the gold chain that you can either wear or tuck inside. I really liked the style. 
and I'm hoping to get about 15 for this. It was 8 out of 10 on condition, um, maybe even a 9 out of 10, just a couple little signs of wear, but definitely nothing major. This next one is a Zara Woman leather bag, and it's nice size, it's got nice braided detail, it's got the braided detail on the smaller strap, and then it does have the longer strap, which I appreciate. Uh, I do think that these leather ones from Zara Woman uh, can get a good amount, a decent amount, so I'm hoping, hoping for about 30. It's not in perfect condition, but definitely good condition, so I'd say about a 7 out of 10 on condition. This next one I was excited to open and look up because it just it feels new. It's a really cute style. It's a backpack kind of messenger, or, you know, bike messenger bag. And it's got this really cool design, houndstooth design. This is, it feels like it's uh, maybe waterproof, weatherproof, which is great if you are on a bike or outside in bad conditions. But it looks like it's in perfect condition, but when I looked it up, I don't think these sell for too much. It's called Tangier, so I don't know if you can see the marking, but I'm hoping to get about 25 for it. The pile is dwindling, so shouldn't be too much longer. This is a Betsyville, Betsy Johnson Betsyville bag with the lips all over it, ooh la la, date me, hi sweet, hi sweetie. So anyone who really loves the classic Betsy Johnson might really like this. It does have some signs of wear, so I've maybe put this as a 7 out of 10. Hoping to get about 18 for this. And this next one I might need, I might need your help if I can get the image to show up. This bag is incredibly soft. It is, has some really nice detail. It's got both straps. But I, for the life of me, cannot figure out this, this label. It is a mystery, and I have tried every variation. So I wanted to say that it looked like Jason Drake. It's got this, I'm sure this is kind of a, a, a woman uh, lining. But it's just so soft. And I mean, even the zipper pull has this great detail. I don't know if it's a nothing brand. I would love to find out what the brand was because it's just a very soft bag. So if anyone knows, I mean, it gets to the point where they have the branding on the circle right here. They have it in a few other places. So I just can't imagine with that much branding that it's a nothing brand. But who knows? So if anyone is familiar, it looks like it's Jason Drake maybe, but I have tried every attempt. I think I tried uh, Karen Drake. Karen Duke, Jason Duke. Um, it's just this cursive and I can't seem to find it anywhere. But it's about seven out of 10 on condition, a little worn. I'm hoping to get up maybe about 15 if I disclose how soft it is. So this next one is a Rebecca Minkoff and I was excited to see it. However, it does have quite a bit of wear. So I put this as a five out of 10 and it's this cute mini fringe bag. I do have a thing for fringe myself, so I don't mind selling them, but if you can see kind of along here and even on the fringe, just kind of coming off a little bit, just looks a little dingy. The strap isn't too bad. Um, I'm still hoping to get about 35 for this, but I was hoping for a Rebecca Minkoff, maybe a little larger and better condition, but I'll, I'll take any of this. This is, I think, all still sellable. This is a really cute bag, another one that I was excited to see or look up because it just feels like it's really great quality. A nice soft leather in this black, two-tone, but this is the brand, and I'm not sure, Marco, I'm not sure how to say the last name, so I won't try, but it just is really good quality. It doesn't have a leather strap, which is actually sometimes nice so that it's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, another one that just has lots of pockets and kind of a thin style. I'm hoping to get about 30 for this. It is a sellable brand, uh, but there are some just light wear. So it's about 7 out of 10. And another backpack. 
This one was just a beauty. It's this faux leather. The brand is imprinted, so I'm hoping it's coming up a little bit. It's called Zabella. And another one that I pulled out thinking, ah, oh, this is going to be a good find. And it, it's not a bad find, but it definitely doesn't have a high resale value. So it's a faux leather. It's great condition, almost like it's never been worn. Backpack. And I'm hoping to get about 20 for this. So here was the second no-name brand that I'm just going to take a chance on. Just style alone. I thought it was kind of cute. It's this green bag that it does say, if I can find it, it does say imprinted. It's not pulling up the made in Italy genuine leather. And it just looks like it's a good quality bag. I just thought it was a cute color, a cute size. And so I am going to run the risk and list it and hope someone will maybe add it to a bundle or some see it on the page, on the closet. So I'm hoping to get about 15. It's about 8 out of 10. I think I need to trim up some strings, but definitely a cute no-name brand. This is a new of tags, and I kind of thought it was a, a junk bag. Not a junk bag. Kind of a cheapy bag. But surprisingly, so it says, I think it's Rimmin & Co., and there's, I kind of just thought it was, you know, I, I don't know what I thought, but it's got this zipper around the handle so you can make one handle out of it. It's in perfect condition. It's got the long strap and plastic in here, but surprisingly this does sell. Uh, so I'm hoping to get about 20, uh, yeah, $20 for this. It's kind of a, I would say Easter looking bag. So my <laughs> Might take a while to sell, but I think it'll still sell. This is an Elliot Luca black bag with this kind of bow detail. It's a, I'd say eight out of 10 condition, but here's the label. And uh, it's, yeah, it's cute. It's fairly basic. I like the, the braided handles. So I'm hoping to get about $20 for this. This one I wasn't sure if I was going to list, but just two days ago I sold a bag from this brand, and so I'm going to take a shot with it. But it's the Tina Nello, and it's kind of a long black. It's got this cute detail. This is the label, and it's definitely a bit, it's, it's a bit worn, not major. It still has a long life ahead of it, but just black is hard to photograph for me. And so I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure about this one. If it does sell, I'm expecting to get about 15. All right, this one is a faux leather crossbody. It's cute. Uh, this is a brand called P-I-G-I, P-G, P-G, but it's got a little heart. And I did look this up. They don't go for much. I think this is a faux leather. It's cute. It's in good condition. I'd say 8 out of 10. So I'm hoping to get about $10 for that. This brand was nice. It's kind of got the raw leather look. It's uh, by the brand Lucky Brand, and I really like the style. It's just kind of more of a boho. So Lucky Brand bags, the leather bags tend to do well. This is pretty clean on the inside. No major signs of wear. Light right here that I'm going to have to use some leather cleaner. But other than that, good condition. Let's say 7 out of 10. I'm hoping to get about $40 for this. And this last, well, not last bag I'm going to show, but last bag that I still need to sell is this Palsma. Uh, Picasso. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but I thought, because this is a faux leather, vegan leather, I thought when I got this, it looks like nothing. There is branding. So I put this in the pile of the warehouse sale and there is a light pin mark on this one little corner. You can see right here, there's the logo as well. So I didn't think anything of this. I put it in the warehouse and then I was showing my mom via FaceTime the bags and uh, she said, 
No, I think that's actually a brand. And so it, this was in here. It was torn off and it does say genuine leather made in Italy has the brand. It's got a serial number. So I just didn't, I didn't expect this to really be anything, but I'm hoping to get about $20. These, some of this brand can go for quite a bit more, but so that's it for what I still need to resell. And what I'm planning on reselling uh, I have sold four bags. I don't have them here, but I just thought I'd run through. So I did sell a fossil tan corduroy bag, which I was surprised, but it sold in a bundle with two other tops. Um, and I uh, approximate $15 since it was in a bundle. It wasn't exactly priced out separately, but about $15, which is what I was expecting, $10, $15 for that, just because it was a corduroy, not a leather. There was also this really unique Harry Potter satchel it had the plastic on the zipper pulls, so it was kind of new without tags. I'm not, I, I know my nieces are Harry Potter fans. I've never seen Harry Potter. I'm not too familiar with it, but when I did show my mom, she said, oh, that'll definitely sell. So it did sell, and it sold within a day. And it was, it, you know, 9 out of 10 condition, even though it was had the plastic, it did show on the patent leather that it had a, a few minor scuff marks, which I disclosed, but it went for $40 and sold very quickly. There was a Vera Bradley black zipper tote similar to one of the other ones that I had, and that sold for 25, which was the full asking. It was like eight out of 10 condition, uh, not new with tags, but, and then the, the last one, it sold within about an hour, 30 minutes maybe. It was a Coach Pink Pebble purse, and I decided to list a little bit lower on this, and the reason why is I think there's a lot of Coach available. It was this really pretty pink pebble uh, leather, which was cute, but it was also missing the long strap. So it was a small little handbag, two little straps, and then it was missing the long strap. Obviously, I disclosed that. I think I listed it for 50 maybe. And someone within 30 minutes offered $40. I accepted. Uh, I know there were a couple other likes, so I'm not sure if it was the color and the pebble style, even without that missing strap, if maybe it could have gotten more. But it was still, in my opinion, great to move it quickly. So overall, I did pay $500, no shipping for this. And uh, my projected Poshmark payout after all of these have sold is $1,159.80. Obviously, it's not going to be exactly that, but that's just my analysis. The bags, the 45 bags that I'm planning on selling in a warehouse sale hopefully soon, some of them are actually really good bags, but uh, maybe it's light damage or they were, you know, brands that just don't have a high resale value, but in great condition. So I'm hoping to get about 2 to $3 for that. On the low end, I think I should be able to get about $90 from those items sold. And the projected profit out of all of this is $746.80. So more than double my money. Um, I did get, as I mentioned, three fake handbags. So I wanted to show those to you. And they are sending me at least three new bags to replace these. But uh, I'm hoping for maybe a little bit more since they shouldn't be. Hopefully they, they get on their screening a little bit more. And if someone actually thinks that some of the stuff is real, it would be unfortunate. Um, maybe even if they resell a fake one. So this one is appeared to be a pretty fake Fendi style bag. Um, not in bad condition, but it's definitely not Fendi. So I am sending that back. This one came in the very last box and I was kind of initially, oh, another Kate Spade, great. Except if you look, it's the stamped Kate Spade. So when I lived in LA many years ago, I worked in an office and there was a woman in my office that sold fake bags. And that was really my first exposure to fakes. It seems to be an underground market, but this just says made in Italy. It has no other branding on it whatsoever. But I, I think she sold some Kate Spades and they had this stamped instead of the um, kind of raised Kate Spade logo. So with the Kate Spades I have sold and received and seen out in the wild, they the stamping is usually a telltale sign that it's not authentic, but definitely looking for way more branding than just a stamp on the outside. So I'll be sending that back. And then this one was a weird one. Not weird, but 
It appears to be a Tory Burch. It's this coated tote. Uh, but again, there were absolutely no other signs of the branding anywhere. Just this one little spot right here. I did, they do apparently make these. Someone did say on my Instagram, this might have come as like a gift set or something. But when I found some similar, they did in fact have some branding on this pocket, which this one doesn't. So I don't want to run the risk. I'm going to send it back and we will go from there. So that was my box. Uh, three fake handbags. Hopefully I should be able to get about 20 to to $100 more that wasn't part of my calculation earlier. But hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned. I should be filming soon, today or tomorrow, a 50 hand bag box where I do uh, get a vintage Chanel. So the backstory with that, I started getting these handbags. I was FaceTiming my mom. She lives an hour away. And I told her, you should order one of these soda boxes. It's kind of a fun process to open them. So she is going through a house renovation and didn't want to get the 100, so she got the 50. And with that, she FaceTimed me and went through what she got, an open box, and she found a vintage Chanel that looks to be authentic, although we will still need to get it authenticated. So stay tuned for that. Please subscribe. Uh, go to my Instagram. It's at Common Tags. Um, or my Poshmark closet at Common Tags as well. Again, my name is Courtney. I'll continue to make reselling content and hopefully you enjoyed this style. Uh, 100 handbags is a lot, so I really just wanted to weed out the ones that weren't really worth showing and just highlight the, the good quality ones or the decent quality ones that hopefully should bring back some of my money. So stay tuned for more videos and please hit that subscribe button. I am new and so I'm hoping that if you guys like and subscribe, I'll continue to do more of these videos. So hope to see you guys soon in the next video.